my name is Polly Hickling and I'm the course leader of the live event technology course here at Solent. Today it is International Women in Engineering Day, so I've got a series of things coming up um, via on our Instagram page. Um, and the first one is an interview with Kendall Turley, who works for Timeline TV. Kendall graduated in 2014 um, and she's been working in a variety of broadcast roles ever since. So, Kendall, could you just uh, give me a little bit of an overview of, of your job title and what that actually means, what you do on a day to day? Yeah, hello. Um, I'm a vision guarantee at Timeline TV. So, I've been there for almost three years now. Um, Timeline's a bit different as um, we've got a mixture of studios and OBs. So, I generally work in OB, so I work in a variety of the different um, tracks that we've got and go on site and look after my own team of people and uh, hopefully bring some good TV to people. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. I know that Timeline has had to do quite a lot um, of the remote production side of things over the last year because of the pandemic. Could you just tell us a little bit about what that's kind of been like, how you've, how you've worked through that? Yeah, absolutely. It was um, we were quite heavily involved in remote production before um, COVID unfortunately hit, um, but we definitely found that the production have definitely pushed remote production more and more over the past eighteen months. So we were very fortunate with our boss Dan um, investing uh, money when we first started and bought a load of iPhones, and that was the very much the start of um the process in covid for us and we had a sort of a core team of five or six people in our ealing studio space who um were there prepping the kit sending it out to people's uh, homes and sort of that was like the very start of remote production in in lockdown because there weren't really any big um productions going on moving on from doing iphones which is still sort of ongoing we started our first major production um during lockdown was spring watch and we had a lot of smaller ob's across the the uk um remoting back into ealing studios where the main uh production gallery was and that's sort of um how we continue to do things now we're doing a lot of um remote production we did um the English Premier League that was a big sort of contract last year and every weekend we would do three matches um, from various locations and they would all go back into our other base at um, Stratford um, so it, it's continued it's definitely been a big push towards remote production and then last week I was looking after um, Formula E in Ealing so doing the English um, English aspect and the gallery was in there and we had feeds coming in from Mexico over Tata lines and it's all very busy it's all sort of go with remote production there's still live OBs are starting to come back and bigger OBs and stuff like that but it's still remote production is still a massive um, part of our and um, I think it's what we're we're known for in timeline is our remote productions and you think that's something that will continue kind of post pandemic as well yeah, I think um, money is always a big thing, so I, I'm i not involved in that aspect, but I think that's definitely a part to play in it. Um, but I think production do miss being on site and being there with us, um, but I do think that's the way the industry is going. The Paralympic Games that we're doing with BBC is going to be remote production. The Euros that's going on now, um, that's remote production as well. Um, we've got loads of something called OB lights that have gone out to various um, countries and but we have got OB trucks out doing live OBs as well so it is it is varying but I think that's the way the industry is definitely going to go especially for more foreign jobs maybe not necessarily in the UK but I think sending extra crew where they can go to one of our bases in Ealing or at Stratford then I think that's that's the way it's going to go. And just one of the questions I, I like to ask about this topic is, does it mean a reduction in the number of staff at all? No, it's it's the location of staff. It's not necessarily the reduction of staff. You're still going to have a core 
group of engineers and people and a small team of production that will go to the place where the football match is. But you'll still have the same, you'll still have a director, all the producers, the EVS ops and stuff like that, but they're just not necessarily abroad. They'll be in a studio in the UK. There's plenty of jobs available in this field then. Oh gosh, absolutely. I think um, it's just a different, it's a different job to what it was two, three years ago. And I think you've just got to be open minded that there are going to be live OBs where you've got these massive jobs, but there are going to be the smaller jobs where you're sending feeds back to, uh, to the galleries and stuff like that. It's just a mixture now, I think, rather than massive OBs that sort of happened two, three years ago. Brilliant. That leads me on to my final question then, which is, do you have any tips, top tips, advice, guidance for anybody that's thinking about coming into this industry? And we're talking very much here about the technical side of, of television um, and film and live events. Yeah, I think it's get involved. Um, I think when I was at university, there was so many opportunities to go out and do all of these different things and get a proper sense for what you actually want to do as well in the industry there's so many different um ways you can go i started out as a sound engineer and i'm a vision guarantee at an ob company so i would say definitely get the experience get in and doing the events at university and just email all the different companies to try and get um some work experience even if it's for a couple of weeks and once you've got your name in there then it's a lot easier to come back after you've finished and go, oh, do you have any jobs or a graduate scheme? Um, and I'd, I'd say that to anyone, not just women, I'd say that to anyone that just get your name out there and ask. And yeah, that was, yeah, <laughs> that's it really. Thank you so much, Kendall. Thank you for talking to us today and uh, helping us celebrate International Women in Pleasure. the UK 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Polly.